Welcome to Maths with Bob. Today we're continuing the series of matrices and uh, today we're actually having a look at something called Gaussian reduction. And uh, we're sticking with the same number of equations as unknowns and we're going to have a look at uh, a sing well, singular and non-singular cases today. And uh, what are these reduction methods? Well, if you um, basically just have zeros below the diagonal, you get what's called the Gaussian reduction. And if you go a little bit further, you get called the Gauss-Jordan reduction. Uh, it does take a bit longer to get to this stage where you actually have uh, just uh, basically ones down the diagonal, and then you can just read off the solution. But uh, let's say start with uh, just doing a, a Gaussian reduction. Okay, now these are supposed to be, uh, as you can see here, it says here, more efficient than the, um, the matrix and, uh, well, the determinant and matrix methods, actually. And uh, you might remember that uh, if uh, the coefficient matrix was, in fact, uh, singular, you couldn't actually use these determinant and matrix methods. And uh, Gaussian reduction can handle these situations. Okay, so let's actually uh, start augmenting. Uh, okay. All right, now, so what happens? Well, you, obviously, you've got to solve three equations, and we're looking at three equations and three unknowns at the moment. And uh, the, you can see here, of, uh, the, um, uh, let's have a look here. This is the, um, okay, that's the, uh, basically, the coefficient matrix. Uh, let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, so this is the coefficient matrix. Now, 1, minus 2, 1. Well, where does that come from? Well, 1 is obviously the coefficient of x, minus 2, y, and 1, z. Okay, so we've actually made up uh, matrix A from the coefficients, okay, on, if you like, the left-hand side of the equal sign. And the 1, 3, 2, which, are, okay, is on the right-hand side of the equal sign, uh, is basically what we augment this matrix with. Okay, and you see here I've actually worked out that uh, this thing, the determinant is actually 2, so this is, in fact, a non-singular case. And if you look down here, uh, okay, uh, you can see actually I've augmented A. Augmented A, basically, uh, you can just add the 1, 3, and the 2, uh, okay, as uh, another column, I guess. That's, you can say it just like that. That's pretty easy. Another column, okay, on the end. Okay, now, what do we do? Well, we actually have to start doing uh, row operations, basically. And um, if you have a quick look, uh, let's have a look. Uh, okay, now augmented matrix. Okay, here, here it is. Okay, so the first thing is, to, if you can find a 1, that's very handy. Okay, so basically, uh, if we have 1, we can actually just subtract multiples of that off the different rows uh, to make uh, the x, uh, if you like, position 0. And this is what we do. We uh, Row 2 becomes row 2 minus 2 lots of row 1. Okay, obviously, we just take off, uh, you can see here, 2 lots of row 1 off. Uh, row 2 and you get a 0 here okay in the first position okay and you keep uh, working on this okay you can see here we've got a 3 down the bottom so if we just take off row 3 will become uh, you can see here uh, basically row 3 minus 3 lots of row 1 okay to get another 0 so we have 1 1 0 0 down here that's a good start okay and uh, you can see here we actually have a 1 here so that's handy so we, we can actually um, use that as well. So we actually basically uh, take off seven lots of row two off row three to, you can see here, get basically zero, zero, zero. So we've got the uh, zeros below the diagonal, okay? Uh, as you know, the diagonal doesn't go right down, obviously, because we've got augmented the matrix. Okay, now from this situation, we can uh, set up the equations and actually solve for our values. Okay, so uh, what do we do? Well, actually, let's have a quick look. What do we do? Well, um, I'm just going to grab a highlighter. Okay. All right. So first up, uh, you can see here, 2 lots of z equals minus 8. And you can see here, 2 lots of z is minus 8. z is actually minus 4. Right. Okay. Let's pick another highlighter. Okay. Obviously, from this row, what happens on, on this one? Well, we have basically y, uh, positive 1y, and a minus 1z. So it's y minus z equals 1. Okay, this is what we did here. We back substitute z as minus 4, and you can see here y minus minus 4. This is y, well, obviously y plus 4, and you put on the other side 1 minus 4 is minus 3. Okay, so we have y is minus 3. And then we just use, uh, let's see if I can, I'll just go back to yellow again. Okay, the top one, we have uh, basically 1x minus 2y's as z equals 1. Okay, this one here. 
and we back substitute the uh, z and the y to find our x and we can see here we have our solution now z minus 4 y is minus 3 and x equals minus 1 now um, in the number plane if this is a three-dimensional obviously this is the point of uh, intersection okay so we have a, a, a unique solution here okay now if you want to go a bit further let's have a look now okay if we want to go further and to the uh, Gauss Jordan you can see here there is in fact a little bit more work involved to basically get all the zeros in all the right spots okay uh, eventually uh, ending up um, let's have a look over here um, I mean I won't go through all this but basically ooh, okay it's not a very good circle that one but basically uh, you can see here we have one zero zero uh, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. Okay. I'll see if I can get this. Ah, there we are. Okay. So um, this is basically our gauss jordan reduction. We have, a, uh, you can see here down here, we have a, a diagonal unit, a diagonal, 1, 1, 1, and zeros everywhere else. But it did take a bit of work. Uh, and then you can just read off the solutions. Obviously, the solutions... Uh, if you uh, should just read the solutions off from here, you can just see here, what x is equal to negative one, right? Straight off. Uh, okay, that's uh, and then you can see here, bang, y is equal to negative three, and obviously uh, z equals negative four. But it was a fair bit of extra work involved, and a lot of people think that sometimes that you, if you just do back substitution, you can get the answer just as quick, or in sometimes, in fact, uh, a bit more efficiently. So it's up to you whether you want to keep on going to the Gauss-Jordan reduction. Um, okay, let's look at another example. Okay, here we have, uh, this case is, um, well, basically a, a singular again. Okay, um, okay, a singular case. Well, the other one was actually non-singular. I suppose this is different from the earlier one. So you can here see the determinant value actually is zero and uh, we augment our matrix again uh, you might remember we just look at the coefficients here from the coefficient matrix which is a we augment it uh, by putting one two and three on the end column okay so we augment the matrix okay, okay as before okay then we start doing a bit of uh, basically um, row reduction again and you can see here one um, one here is very handy and we do the same sort of thing basically as before you can go through those operations but basically one thing I want to point out is uh, we do, do have to stop okay down here now okay we end up with a 0 equals a negative 2 okay this is impossible okay okay all right okay so basically uh, we have a situation where we we have an impossible number of solutions now what do we think that means okay uh, the solution uh, okay the equation is said to be inconsistent it basically means that uh, um, we don't have actually a single point of intersection okay let's actually look at GeoGebra well okay here we have uh, GeoGebra I've just put these three planes into the uh, um, GeoGebra 5 and we're going to uh, hopefully get these to rotate in a second they should be rotating uh, okay hold on. now okay what's going on it should be rotating uh, here we go <laughs> sorry took a while to get it to rotate well um you can see the gray is the xy plane i can actually we can take out let's take out the xy plane okay and what is this uh, inconsistent mean? Well, you can see that, okay, two of the planes do actually intersect in a line, okay, so there will be an infinite number of solutions between two, two of the planes. But the third plane, that little uh, light green, if you want to give it like an aqua color, you can see is not actually cutting the other two planes um, at any particular point, actually. So this is uh, uh, this is the inconsistent case. Okay, um, we, can, we can actually um, have a look at it from different angles, but basically, okay, here we are. I need to really zoom in there, but basically, we've got a situation where, in fact, the three planes have no point in common. I guess you could say it like that. Okay, no solution. Okay, 
All right. Okay. Well, uh, let's get back to the next case. Okay, let's actually now have a look at what's called a redundant case. Now, the redundant case means there's an infinite number of solutions. The earlier case was the inconsistent one where there was actually no solution. And let's see what happens with the Gaussian reduction. Well, uh, you can see here uh, it is obviously singular. Okay, its determinant value is zero. Okay, so uh, we have a singular coefficient matrix. Uh, we can see we've augmented it. Uh, okay, uh, we just form the co uh, augmented coefficient matrix here uh, as before. We work on it, and um, you can see here this is actually a um, fairly complicated, there's quite a lot of information on this one, but basically we do the row reduction again, and uh, eventually, we, um, we eventually can go through those and have a look. We end up getting this uh, situation down here, like 0 equals 0. So the last row, if you get a situation like this, uh, the equations are said to be redundant, okay, there's an infinite number of solutions, and you can... Um, Get what you can introduce a parameter. Say in this case, I'm going to uh, introduce z equals t and get a, a general solution in terms of t. A, a particular solution, okay. Um, I'll just uh, you can see here. I just did a particular one to start with. When z is equal to three, we can actually if z three, we end up getting uh, y is two thirds and x is minus four thirds. But if you do a general one in terms of t. Uh, with z is equal to t, you actually have to go through a bit of work and get y is one third of three t minus seven. Okay, z's t, and uh, eventually you'll get um, x is actually five on three minus t. And how do you get those? Well, obviously you've got to use these equations here. Okay, x plus two y minus z, which was obviously t equals negative three. And you have to rearrange these um, because we know what y would be. We found out y from this one minus three y plus three uh, z, which is t equals seven. Okay, here we minus three y plus 3t, which is 3z, is equal to 7. You get, um, get y in terms of t over here. And then you plug that into uh, x plus 2y minus z, which is again t, and you know y now in terms of t as well. And you end up getting a value for x in terms of t. So you now have a, what's called a general solution okay, for this redundant situation. Uh, just to finish off, we're going to have a quick look at what this looks like in GeoGebra. Well, here we have a, a GeoGebra 5 again, and we have the uh, three planes. And uh, we're going to uh, basically have a quick look at what the difference is, actually. Okay, now, all right, uh, let's just take out uh, the XY plane. Okay, all right, so we don't want the grid either. Okay, so here we have the three planes. Okay, now, what do we notice about these three planes? Well, okay, if you have a quick look there, uh, you can actually see that these three planes all intersect in, in a one common straight line. Okay, okay, all right. I don't know whether we can see. It's probably better to see it from the end here. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, here we are. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So basically, um, this is the redundant case. Okay, uh, where we have. Uh, an infinite number of solutions, basically. Uh, can you, the reason we've got an infinite number of solutions is, in fact, uh, all the three planes actually intersect in one straight line. Okay, well, thank you for watching, and bye for now.